Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor who is available for consulting, code reviews, training, activities. So in this episode, I am going to take a look at the fact that C++ 20 now has a mechanism to allow for multiple destructors. And if you know anything at all about C++, that's probably going to sound pretty weird. So be sure to stay tuned to this episode and see what the point is and how this is going to work. Now, I know that I've had some audio popping issues in some of the episodes that I've recorded recently. Hopefully, I can clean those up and some of my post-processing. It's very unfortunate. I do not understand where it's coming from, and I don't know if it's going to be a problem until after the episode is recorded, which is incredibly frustrating. So, hopefully, it is not a problem in this episode, but if it is, I apologize, and I apologize for previous episodes where it has been a problem. In this episode, I am using GCC trunk and I have it in 2A mode. We're just going to start there. Now, this is GCC trunk built when? It's 11.0, built on July 20th. Because on Compiler Explorer, if you say trunk, you mean trunk and you're getting trunk. It's going to be something that's going to be compiled quite recently. All right. Now, there are a few things like standard optional that need the ability to be trivially destructible when they contain a trivially destructible object and they need to be not trivially destructible when they do not contain a trivially destructible object. So I am going to try to put together real quick here kind of an optional like thing that that does this and we're gonna see how this goes. Okay, so I've created an anonymous union here inside of my optional thing that has my contained data type and I've set this initialized flag. Now this is known to be nowhere near a complete implementation of optional. So just so you know. Now I'm going to just, I'm not even going to put around the machinery at all, I don't think. To initialize this data object in here. Maybe I will. Okay, I will. All right. Now, this is definitely not going to be a complete part of this. So if I receive a data by our value reference, then I'm going to assign it to the contained data element here. I need to include the utility header to get standard move. And then I am going to set this initialized flag. Now, what I need to do is on the destruction of my optional, I need to destroy the data thing. I need to call its destructor. And I can do it like that, effectively. Let's make sure we at least got the syntax right here. Seems that I did. And if I assign it the value five, let's see, no return statement. That is in fact true. And this can be const expert, etc. Well, I am containing an optional int. An int, an int is a trivially destructible thing. 
So having this destructor here means that optional is not trivially destructible. And this matters because the compiler can do lots of optimizations if a type is trivially destructible, and this one can't. This assertion is going to fail. Um, it really honestly shouldn't even compile because I haven't included the type traits header. But sometimes these things are leaky with our headers in C++. So I've included the type traits header. Now let's just get back to a couple of things here. A trivial destructor means that it has literally nothing to do at all in the destruction of the object. So if I make this destructor trivial, and comment or default initialize it, comment this out, this code compiles. This is trivially destructible. But I need to do something in the case where it is not trivially destructible. And it doesn't matter if the body of the destructor is empty. This is still not trivially destructible. So I have to give this a trivial destructor in some way. And I can do that in a couple of interesting ways. I can create this empty struct here, and I can create this other one. Now this is kind of what we would do in C++ 11 time frame. I'm going to use CRTP, that is the Curiously Recurring Template Pattern, to refer back to the other, well, you'll get there in a second. I need to do it like this. We'll explain in just a moment. So in my destructor here, I'm going to static cast my this pointer. To an object of type type. And in here, I need to do something like this. So now I have two different types. One tank contains a non-trivial destructor that's going to destroy the thing, and the other one it does not have a destructor at all, and therefore it's going to be trivially destructible. Now I'm going to selectively inherit from one of these two things. And this is going to look something like this. So I'm going to use the conditional template and I'm going to say if the contained type is trivially constructible, then I want you, uh, trivially destructible, I want you to return optional trivial. And if it is not trivially destructible, then I want you to do this. And what I'm saying here is I want you to inherit, this is an optional inheritance, so at compile time it's gonna make this switch. If it is trivially destructible, then I want you to inherit from trivial, if this contained thing is, otherwise I want you to inherit from non-trivial optional contained. Now I'm getting this static assertion failed is still here and that's because I still have this destructor. So now I have at compile time chosen who to inherit from to decide whether or not I have a trivial destructor. And let's just prove that this is doing in fact what we needed to do. I'm going to put in another static assertion to say it is not trivially destructible, an optional of type string, because string is not a trivial destructible type, so it needs to do the right thing. Okay, this compiles. Now, theoretically, this is all working. There's probably some bugs in this code, but I'm trying to illustrate a point, and that point now gets us to what C++ 20 is going to give us. 
So this is complicated machinery. It is not necessarily obvious how to read this. So let's get rid of it. And instead, I'm going to define my destructor again. And this is going to be, oh, I didn't even do that uh, if is initialized thing up here, but that's all right. I'm going to do this. Now, we're going to get the static assertion failing again. We no longer need these. But what we got now was C20. And just for the record, this can be a const expert destructor in C20 as well. I can say this requires not is trivially destructible v of the contained type. So I'm using a C20 concept to constrain the destructor. Now I'm going to get this no matching function call here for this destructor. So I now have this type, this int one right here. It, I can't even create an object of this type. I can technically. I can't create one on the stack because it doesn't have a destructor because this destructor only works if this thing is not trivially destructible. So I need to provide another one. And so it's going to pick the most constrained one that matches first, and then it's going to look for whatever destructor is left over. And this is in C20 mode. So there you have it, multiple destructors in C20. Only one of them can match the constraints of the types given, really only makes sense in a template, requires concepts, and at the moment GCC is the only compiler that I see that properly does this. I get other errors from other compilers. Um, so go out and uh, create multiple destructors where it makes sense. I hope you liked this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to share it with your friends.